Now again. So now that we understand torque, let's see the importance of torque. Let's also understand why torque is defined the way torque is defined. To understand that, let's look at a basic example. Let's say there's a rod which is hinged at the center. So it is fixed at that point and it cannot move. But if you create such an arrangement, you know by experience that the rod should be able to move. So let's look at this animation to help us understand all that we do here in this diagram. Right. So this rod is hinged at the center and we are trying to apply a force F at this end. Now what do you think will happen? This rod will certainly not start to move, but it will, as you can see, start to rotate, right? So we see that sometimes the force that is applied, or rather we should say a combination of force because if you have a hinge at the center, this hinge too will apply some force on the rod. So you could have such a combination that overall the rod does not move, but it starts to rotate. Now when I say that overall the rod does not start to move, what I mean is that the center of mass is still stationary, right? Or you could simply say is at rest, right? So the center of mass, the acceleration of center of mass is still zero because the net force is zero, but it has started to rotate. If you recall, the Newton's second law told us that for a collection of particles, the net external force is equal to mass, the total mass into acceleration of center of mass. So even when this rod rotates, the center of mass is still at rest, meaning the net force on this rod is zero. Now, a similar situation can be created if the rod is not hinged, but you have an equal and opposite forces acting on this rod. So you can see here that when such forces act, since the forces are equal and opposite, the center of mass will still not accelerate, but the rod will start to rotate, right? So the force can not only make something translate or rather let's specifically focus on the center of mass because in general we can talk about a collection of particles. So when a force acts, it's not necessary that the center of mass starts to move, but the force certainly can cause some effect on the particles individually. So when we talk about a rigid body, a force can make it start to rotate even if the center of mass is still at rest. So this effect of force is captured through torque. Now, once we understand the intent of torque, that is to capture this tendency to rotate a body, we can look at things which affect this tendency, right? So to do that, the first obvious thing that you know is the greater the amount of force, the greater would be this tendency to rotate something, right? So if you apply a higher force, you can see that this body will start to ro rotate at a much rapid rate, right? Now, the second thing is, the greater the distance at which this force is applied, the greater is this effect this force has or the rotational tendency that it generates. The simplest example of this is levers which you've studied, right? So if you try to lift this load with a small rod, you'll have to apply some effort. So if the lengths were equal on both sides, the effort required will be equal to the load on the other side. But if the effort arm was made twice the length, then the amount of force that you have to apply will become half, right? So this is again happening because since the distance is greater, the rotational tendency of that force increases. So the distance itself has some effect on the amount by which the force can rotate something, right? So force and distance, right? 
Now, the last criteria is the angle at which a force acts. So, let's have two vertical rods hinged at their centers and now let's apply two different forces at two different angles. Now, you can clearly see that force on the left has the, the force is applied such that it is very close to along the length of the rod, right? And you can by intuition clearly tell that the force on the right will have a higher tendency to ro rotate that rod. So the rods, both the rods will rotate, but the one on the right will rotate much rapidly, right? So the angle itself has some significance. And in particular, it is the component of the force which is perpendicular to the rod, which will in effect rotate the rod. Right, because if I split both these forces into components, you can see that the one which is along the length does not have a tendency to rotate, but rather it is trying to pull the rod, right? So it is only the perpendicular component which can rotate the rod. And the perpendicular component of the force is simply F sine theta. So in addition, we should also have a sine theta term in this, right? So to simplify this, we come back to the expression that we had applied that F sine theta is F perpendicular. So torque is either F perpendicular into R or the torque is F into R perpendicular. Right. So you can now see the R perpendicular shown in both the figures and you can understand why the second force has a larger rotational tendency as compared to the first force. Right. So this is why torque is defined the way it is defined. Now, secondly, we know that in vector form, torque is R cross F. Right. So first of all, R cross F captures this FR sine theta. And secondly, R cross F gives us the right direction of rotation. So in both the cases, you can use right hand rule and see that the direction of rotation you get by using R cross F is consistent with the direction in which it rotates. So if you had defined it F, F cross R, the direction you'd get would be opposite to the direction in which it rotates. Right. So we can say that torque acting due to a force F applied on a body is R cross F. Right. So once we understand this, moving further, we know we have seen that torque has the same effect as, ma as force in linear motion. Right. So for the second law, which we had, that was F is equal to M into A, we have a similar equation in case of rotational motion. And that, rota that equation is that torque is equal to I into alpha. So this is the equivalent of Newton's second law in case of rotational motion. 